Hey everybody, welcome back. In our last episode, we 3D printed all the parts necessary to build the rock arm cluster. Now, as you can see on the screen, we've got all of our actual components. This is the exciting part. So let's go ahead and get this thing assembled. Let's step through what these components are first. So we'll start across the top. These are the four nodes, one, two, three, four. And then our fifth one here is our storage node. This is the one with the SATA hat. We're only using two ports on that now for this project. Then all of these nodes, something that's super critical to point out is that they all have this big beefy heat sink on it. This is really critical. You can't even buy the NAS SATA hat without it, mostly because it uses the heat sink as part of the mounting for the PCIe header. But I really don't recommend running any of these nodes without a heat sink. It really just, it keeps them cool and it's an integral part of how I design the airflow in the rock arm. Then we have two three and a half inch discs. They're a mirrored pair. So remember you need two discs of the same size and we'll only have advantage of the capacity of one disc for fault tolerance. And that's how mirroring works. And then this is our fan. I really like the Noctua fans. This is an 80 millimeter fan. They're just so quiet. I use them on a lot of other projects. In fact, I have both of my 3D printers upgraded with Noctua fans and they're almost completely silent when printing. It's really awesome. I recommend these, especially since the whole goal of this project is to have a powerful yet silent home lab server. Let's start with the fan. That's the one thing that could make some noise. Uh, links to all of this hardware is down below in the description, as well as listed on my website. Those affiliate links are an easy way to support the channel. So please do click through those links. It doesn't cost you a penny and it supports projects like this. Next, we have our network switch. This is a super tiny eight port gigabit switch. As you can see, I have stripped it out of its housing and supplying power to it directly. This helps keep the footprint of our project compact. And finally, we have our DC to DC power supply. This is a Pico PSU. It's 150 watts, far more than we're drawing overall. But keep in mind, we're only using the five and 12 volt rails. So that's a little misleading, but we're still gonna be well within our limits of this power supply's output. And last, we have a Keystone ethernet jack. This snaps into the housing, so we have a nice clean RJ45 port on the back. So let's get started. Let's get some of these components assembled. Let's start with the top air duct and get our NAS node installed first. This is designed to take advantage of those holes on the heat sink and on the underside of the air duct, you'll see we have some screw holes which line up with those. And by the way, if you don't already have one of these iFixit screwdriver kits, these are awesome. Uh, links in the description. I really like this. It has every screwdriver bit you could need, very high quality, and they have all of those specialized bits that you could find in Apple phones, iPads, computers very worthwhile to have in your workshop. So we're using some 10 millimeter length screws here. There's four of them to hold that NAS in place. Go ahead and get those screwed down nice and tight and that'll keep that node where it ought to be. That looks good. So let's get the fan installed next. And the fan goes right next to the NAS node. So the fan is held in by four of those super coarse PC fan screws and that holds the fan in nice and tightly and gives a good seal on top of the duct. So go ahead and get that installed. And with that in place, we can see the air from the fan is forced down through the duct, keeping our four storage nodes below it nice and cool, as well as our NAS node, all with one fan. Pretty cool. Okay, let's set that aside for now. Next, we need to get all four of our compute nodes installed. Now, pay close attention when you install the heat sinks on these and where the standoffs are. If you look down at the nodes from the top, you can see if we have a standoff on the bottom left and on the upper right, you'll use those taller 10 millimeter standoffs. And the other two are just gonna use regular screws. And now when you insert this node here, you'll see there's a little nub just for that gigabit switch. So this'll go right in there and it'll fit right in between the USB ports. So that's the correct orientation for that node on that left side. These two corners on each node where the standoffs are, you just screw those into place. You just repeat the process around for all four of the nodes. They're all the same, so go ahead and get those installed. Okay, so we have all four of our compute nodes installed now. I wanna point out a couple of things now that we have it assembled. You'll notice these fins here on our frame. Make sure you've assembled the frame correctly so that they're facing inward. These are baffles. 
that should come pretty close to contact with the heat sink near the rock pie motherboard. This is to make sure that the airflow from the fan is directed over the heat sinks to maximize cooling and heat extraction. You also notice the heat sinks are pretty close to each other back to back and that's by design too to maximize airflow. Once we get everything powered up and monitor the CPU temperatures, they're all in fact staying nice and cool as designed. If we flip the whole unit over, you'll notice these slots under the base plate. This is where you can access the micro SD card slots uh, on each of the rock pies without tearing the whole unit apart. You won't necessarily need them from some of these units. You do have 64 gigs of eMMC storage on board, but this gives you easy access to these slots if you need them. Okay, moving on, let's get our hard disks installed. This extra plate here is already screwed on. Now the bottom of the disk should be facing outward and the label should be facing inward. And this will snap into that remaining slot, just a little wiggle and it'll pop right in. And then we just have four more screws, standard hard disk screws, longer ones if you've got them, that will support these disks. So go ahead and get those screwed in. Just be careful not to over tighten them if you're using shorter ones. Let's go ahead and get that RJ45 network connector installed now. This is a good time to do that. This is just a standard Keystone RJ45. If you've ever done any cabling before, this is what you'd find for standard wall plates and things like that. It's pretty common. This will just snap right into the bottom plate here with the little notch facing upward and it should pop right in. So that gives us our nice clean RJ45 on the back of the unit. And now let's go ahead and get our network switch installed. This will go on the same side and it just uses these two screws. They're the same as what we've been using for the rock pie mounting. And you'll see the two holes line up with the two 3D printed standoffs. And I've also just installed a little nut on the back of these just to make sure that the standoff spacing was correct off the back of there. So just thread those on nice and easy and then get that screwed down. Okay, so now we've got our eight port network switch, all four nodes, uh, our two hard disks, our network connector. We've already assembled the top duct component with the fan and the NAS node, and all that's left is the power supply. Now, for this piece, I didn't provide a specific 3D printed bracket for this. There's just too many variations in what you might decide to use, so I actually, just let this piece float. Keep in mind, in this area here, you're gonna have a lot of wiring from the network switch and DC power to the components. I found it sat quite comfortably in there without the need for any additional support. You could put a zip tie or two on there if you wanted, but I didn't find it necessary. So let's just get the DC power plug installed. This is just a standard 12 volt DC barrel adapter and this goes right below the network connector and has a retaining nut to hold it snugly in place. Okay, so that looks good. And the last thing I wanted to show you today is getting the duct and top unit installed. So if we turn it on its side, you'll see I just have two screw holes here. And I really like these really coarse brass wood screws for 3D printed projects like this. I've got links to these down in the description. I find these work really well for these types of projects because they're really coarse. And I find even with quite a bit of assembly and reassembly for prototyping projects like this that it doesn't wear out the material. So I find these were really good for this type of thing. So there's just two on each side. Go ahead and get those uh, cranked in there and that'll be all done. So we're getting pretty close here. The last things remaining are to get the networking all wired in. And for this, I really like these super short, thin network cables. I've got links to all this below. I think that's super important as you don't want to have any excess cable length and you don't want anything impeding airflow or anything like that. And then lastly, you'll be setting up your power supply wiring for your five volt and 12 volt rails. This part gets a little tricky and that's why I'm pulling that last step off to a separate video because it's just so critical to ensure you get these nodes wired in correctly, mainly because we're feeding these nodes directly into their VN pins, which is unprotected from over voltage or reverse polarity or anything like that. So it's just, it's so critical. I can't overstate how critical it is to get that exactly right the first time or you could burn out a node instantly, and we don't want that. Guys, I can't wait to see how your rock arm clusters are coming along. Please hit me up in the comments with any of your questions. Next, we're gonna be doing that final wiring assembly. I'll take you through the custom wiring harnesses so you know exactly how to build those. 
Then we'll be moving on to the software side of the house. We'll get an OS installed on each of these units, get them configured, start running all of your software. We'll get some freak trade containers going, all of your home automation software, your media management, even Plex. Yeah, that's right, Plex runs great on this thing. Thank you again for joining me today. If you're not already, please subscribe, hit that thumbs up, it helps me out a lot. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you see the next video as soon as it's released. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.